Hello, hello, and welcome to the Progressive Patriot moment in time, because I'm not quite ready to commit to an hour. It's not you, it's me. So right now I'm deciding to, first off, take a little rewind and look at what was fresh news some years ago, because sometimes, how often we hear, you must look at the past, uh, lest you be doomed to repeat it, or to, at the very least, learn from it, right? So uh, thank you to one of the many amazing supporters that I have that sent me this article from the Business Insider. And if this is a great ice-breaking kind of article that segues right into something that's very current, very controversial in my state that I'm, I mean, I have my own opinions, but I'm sharing this to get maybe a better understanding of how everybody else feels. Uh, remember, please, I can only represent my understanding of things, my opinion of things. I am not claiming to be an arbiter of the truth in all things right, far from it. I am flawed. I am, I am not infallible. Uh, but uh, with that being said, let's dig right in, okay? So, big throwback over here. Let me uh, not spoil. Okay, I want to spoil the articles in the wrong chronology. So this is from 2012, okay? Think back, 2012, things were quite different, right? This is pre-lockdowns, pre-many pre, pre many things. And uh, the, here's, the, here, here's the big um, title of the article. The NDAA legalizes the use of propaganda on the U.S. public. I want to remind everybody when I was going to CanCon's uh, Rumble.com or Locals, Every Monday, we would do a show at his studio about Operation Mockingbird and how it was never technically shut down. Three-letter agencies, uh, most notably, I believe, the, the, was it the FBI or CIA, were uh, doing things to manipulate the masses. And it was being done to our own citizens and countrymen. So with that being said, I want you to bear that in mind. Hear the title. The NDAA legalizes the use of propaganda on the U.S. public. Now, this got lost in the kerfuffle of my life. And thank you again to... Uh, my, my, I'm keeping the source anonymous unless you express otherwise. Uh, thank you. Let me, let me read this here. The newest version of the National Defense Authorization Act includes an amendment that would legalize the use of propaganda on the American public. Reports... Uh, my, now... I know you, you might think joke. Remember how big BuzzFeed was at, at this time, okay? Reports uh, Michael ha Hastings of BuzzFeed. Still, this is a credible article that just so happened to be the guy. At the time, looking up jokes, found some truth. What do I keep saying? The truth is always hidden in jest, somehow, some way. They tell the truth with lies. The amendment proposed by, I'll just say this, both a Republican and a Democrat. Behind closed doors, behind the curtains, shaking hands, looking at the bills that profit that they both profit from and profiteer from, uh, would effectively nullify the Smith Munt. I cannot say that name accurately. Act of 1948, which explicit, explicitly forbids information and psychological operations aimed at influencing U.S. public opinion. Psychological operations. It would. We were protected. Until 2012, we were protected from any of our own government and, and its agencies from screwing with our minds and influencing how we think and feel. We were protected. And then this happened. And thinking of everything, kind of domino effect of everything that happened thereafter. Thornberry said that the current law ties the hands of America's diplomatic officials. That, uh, that's fluff. Uh, military and others by in inhibiting our ability to effectively communicate in a credible way. Again, this is coming from a, a, a large source at the time, BuzzFeed. They're not as, uh, they don't have the notoriety they once did. The vote came, but this is the truth nonetheless. The vote came two days after a federal judge, uh, a federal judge ruled uh, that an indefinite detention provision in the annual defense bill was un unconstitutional. Did I, did I, I hope you understood it. I don't think I understood it. Okay. A federal judge ruled that an indefinite detention provision in the annual defense bill was unconstitutional. Indefinite detention. 
Now I'm making a little correlation, but I uh, oh mean, uh, this is my first react to the article. All right, I, I, I like the organic, you know, real time thinking. Why would they need indefinite detainment? And look at some, look at the very example. I think, I hope many of you that are receiving this message are thinking the same thing I am. Who are the individuals that have been indefinitely detained without representation and have been given no such rights as to uh, when they're getting out or, or what is their future, except for that they're probably going to do time. Yes, I'll say it. Many of the people that participated in the greatest travesty ever, which I never bought into that hyperbole, known as the 6th of January. So, interesting. Just... I'm blown away that this just so happens to be in this article with that in the backdrop. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Daniel Davis, who released a highly critical report regarding the distort distortion of truth by senior military officials in Iraq and, Af and Af Afghanistan, dedicated a section of his report to information operations and states that after Desert Storm, the military wanted to transform... IO, that's the uh, information operations, into a core military competency on, on, on a par with air, ground, maritime, and special operations. Davis defense IO, defines IO as the integrated employment of electronic warfare, computer network operations, these all have acronyms if you can see them, psychological operations, PSYOP is literally right there, Military Deception, Mil, Mil deck, and Operation Security, o, o, P, e, o, P, S, e, C, in concert with specified supporting and related capabilities to influence, disrupt, corrupt, or usurp uh, ad, adversarial human and automated decision making while protecting our own. I find this very intriguing being that at the forefront right now, like AI is a big thing. I find this intriguing. I have zero knowledge about like the, the Chinese balloon issue and topic, but you know what? Now we, we can definitively ask if the, the origin we're told it's from is credible or not because it's been legal since 2012 to manipulate us, we the people, by our own representation. We the constituency, we're allowed to be lied to, it's okay. I.O. are primarily used to target foreign audiences, but da Davis cites numerous senior leaders who want to, in the words of Colonel Richard B. Leap, protect a key friendly center of gravity to wit U.S. national will by repealing the Smith-Munt Act, which is the act from 48 that was would protect us legally to allow the direct deployment of these tactics on the American public. Davis quotes uh, Brigadier General Ralph O. Baker, the, the Pentagon officer responsible for the Department of Defense's Joint Force Development, i.e. Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines, who defines I.O. as activities undertaken to shape the essential narrative of a conflict or situation and thus affect the attitudes and behaviors of the target audience. Usually it would be, you know, uh, uh, maybe a country we are liberating and we want the hearts and minds but now with this bill being usurped destroyed they can come for our hearts and minds even if it's not for our own good um so let me uh, sorry if i lose my place okay who defines iowa's activities undertaken to shape blah, blah blah okay and equates descriptions of combat operations with standard marketing strategies so they can commercialize them basically and advertise them and pitch it to us in a way that makes it sound the most attractive. So we don't just get, so we don't get the truth. So we get a more attractive means to win us over, to go along with the conflict that they want us to. Can we think of any currently going on like that, that maybe has us kind of torn? Can we? What's this quote here? For years, commercial adversaries uh, have based their advertisement strategies on the premise that there is a positive correlation between the number of times a consumer is exposed to a product. This is essentially, you know, if you, it's like, uh, what is it? Subliminal messaging. You know, you keep flashing a cigarette or a burger, and suddenly you're like, oh, I could use a burger and a smoke right now. 
I think this is pretty much what this is vindicating. I want to shorten it up if I can. Uh, and the consumer's inclination to sample the new product. I was on point. The very same principle applies to how we influence our target audiences when we conduct coin. Okay, let, let me see uh, what else. Okay, good. It's coming to a close. Davis su subsequently explains the cumulative failure of our nation's major media and in, in every ca our media in every category. Think about how much the media, the mainstream media, has changed from 2012. Not that it's ever been, you know, gracefully at our side, beck and call, bleeding the truth at us, but just think about, look at it, just really, really think how much it's changed right now. I, I mean, I, I have completely disavowed it. I, I don't touch it. It's toxic. It's parasitic to me. But it this is no shocking point to me here. Uh, at, okay, so failure of the major media in every category as they continually interviewed only those senior U.S. officials who had top-level access, even as the officials given the clearance were required to stick by, to talking points given to them by security of defense Donald Run, Rumsfeld, my boy Rummy. If the NDAA goes into effect in its current form, the State Department and Pentagon can go beyond manipulating mainstream media outlets and directing directly disseminate campaigns of misinformation to the US public apply that to the internet apply that to every every social media status that's that's fact checking you and just okay wow that that's a nice little pallet driver to go down and uh i i have man now i'm conflicted about this okay controversial time and i'm either i'm either going to you know succeed in, in, in what I stand for, what I believe in, what I want to talk about, because I will I refuse to fall for what I'm not. So yes, this may be a bit triggering. I wanted to give the presentation as a viewer that has no freaking clue what the hell this is, right? So DeSantis just so happens to be the first Republican I ever voted for. Um, right now he has made some huge huge decision regarding the schools here in, in the state of Florida. Now <laughs> Let me go on the record to say I am a huge fan of the actual bill, not the title that the mainstream and, I don't know, the DNC uh, titled it because the bill known as, and please don't take offense, take a moment to hear me out, the bill titled as Don't Say Gay, if you read the bill, it has nothing to do with homosexuality. It's a hyperbolic fear tactic made to create uh, divisiveness, dissension, and hatred preventing conversation, creating co uh, confrontation. It, it only specifies not allowing teachers talking to young children about sex. That's what the bill is about. Where Don't Say Gay came about so Wanda Sykes and company could make stand-up comedy about a lie came from, I don't know. So let me see how they present this. Let me see if I can do this appropriately. Announces his plan to defund DEI programs. I'm going to break into this from two different perspectives. Oh, the music is gone. We need music. Okay. And this means we save money. As Huffington Post reports, DeSantis announced the move as a part of a larger state of policies that the governor has labeled higher education reform. We could use some of that. Give me more. In a special in a speech posted to Twitter, DeSantis dismissed dismissed diversity efforts in universities as window dressing oh they're they're picking and choosing here and claim that these programs are not representative of what the people of this state and the taxpayers of the state want so he's thinking about you know where's our money in a speech posted to twitter DeSantis dismissed uh, saying the same thing again fantastic yes he's trying to represent the taxpayer stupid song lower i don't like you Echoing language that he has used to oppose other anti-racist policies, DeSantis accused DEI programs of imposing a political agenda and said that these programs are a drain on resources at universities that would be defunded under this plan. Okay. Perhaps we should get past this, because I'm very excited to get to the actual truth, and the music is killing me. I can't just lower it. Okay. Don't strike me for the music. 
This new policy is the latest in a long list of controversial reforms that DeSantis has pushed through in Florida that have targeted black Floridians, LGBTQ individuals, false, and other communities. DeSantis has labeled these policies as a campaign against what he labels woke ideology. Well, somebody has to say it out loud, by goodness. I mean, it exists. You can't say it doesn't. DeSantis' plan to defund DEI programs needs approval from the Florida legislature, but the Republican-led state government is likely to pass this proposal as it has with many of the gov governor's policies in the past. So not much uh, prop, uh, imposition there, education, not indoctrination. See, I love how they just kind of flip that right by you. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I have two different versions. I just don't know that you guys have the, and this is not a slight, this is just what I know to be like the human condition. We have short attention spans, right? If I could muster this into four sentences, we'd have a better chance at getting a full understanding here. That's a lot of material. Okay, so let me just give you the kind of just a frame of reference here. This explains the real reasoning here. I'm going to read a little bit, and then unlike the hit piece article that I opened up on the other side, this actually shows what's in the damn bill. Okay, this is not what they're accustomed to doing. They usually hide all of the meat and potatoes of the actual legislation from you, and then they just title it, like, don't say gay or something. They'd probably uh, title this. What would the media title this if given the opportunity? The anti-woke bill or agenda. All right, requiring to overhaul and restructure the new College of Florida, uh, including support for students, scholarships, and hiring f faculty. Money could go there. $5 million in operations and $13 million for capital needs for the Hamilton Center for Classical and Civic Education. Wait, uh, it also previewed that in the fiscal year budget, rec this is recommendations, okay. Uh, $100 million in performance funding that must be used for the recruitment and retention of highly qualified faculty at state universities. Finally, somebody's paying attention to how low we are in, in schooling in general. Um, what was all this here? Requiring the state system board of governors and state board of education to review and realign general education core. So I could provide the link very easily. Just make the request providing additional responsibilities. And so this is a call to action requiring uh, preeminent state research universities to include annual research expenditure of 50 million or more for STEM-related occupations, businesses, or industry partners in Florida that are employ employing Florida residents. Okay, see? So here's some of the good stuff. This is the stuff that the mainstream outlet that I'm about to read, the, the Guardian, they don't mention any of this. They don't mention any of this. And there's more. Allowing institutions, presidents, and, and uh, board of trustees to conduct a post-tenure review of a faculty member at any time with cause. Okay, so... Here's the spin, right? The Guardian. I don't know which way they lean, but I, I noticed right off the rip. Ron DeSantis announces plan to block DEI programs in state colleges. The Florida governor's latest attack comes on the heels of a ban on AP course in African American studies in high schools. All right, so that's the lead. That's the bold text. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announced plans this week to block state colleges from having programs on diversity equality and inclusion and critical race theory in his latest attack on black and in his latest attack like he's been on a war path and lgbtq plus people in the public education system show me anywhere show me the evidence where he has attacked the lgbtq community with any legislation aside from the bill that is misappropriately titled don't say gay which just literally translates to do not talk to my child about sex in the classroom that's let us handle that. And we're talking about grade school age children, by the way. We're not talking high school here. Uh, and I, 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 should, I should know if, at what point it gets into middle school where there's actual some form of sexual education. But like we're talking about with, uh, with this specifically, teachers allowing books of children that are aged like 10 to 12 going through sexual experiences, okay? That's the kind of stuff he was critical on. Do you want your children learning about that without your knowledge? So, okay, so 
That's his attack on the LGBTQ. I don't. I haven't seen where the uh, attack on the African American has come in just yet. But I did see a friend of mine make some kind of a, a post. So I'm about to learn with y'all. Let's learn together, shall we? Won't you be my neighbor? The second term governor, whoop whoop, who is widely expected to launch a 24 white uh, 2024 White House bid in the late spring of early summer, previously blocked a new advanced placement course on African American studies from being taught in high schools which would save money, I would need to know what specifically is being blocked. And I know the optics here. So I'm talking without full, pardon me, knowledge. I just know that the course apparently is advanced uh, placement course on African American studies. Okay. All right. I have to bear that in mind. Okay. Um, <clears throat> being taught in high school, saying it violates state law. And championed a don't say see, oh, sorry I get a little heat and they and championed the don't say gay uh, law prohibiting lessons about sexual orientation that's a lie, or gender identity in the state's permit. Go read the the legislation yourself. Read it yourself. Educate yourself. Do what they're afraid of you doing on your own. Remember, 2012. They can control and manipulate through the media. That's what they're doing right now. I'm watching them bold face. Bold-faced lie to all of us right now, and I'm not okay with that. DeSantis has pursued an aggressive series of policies to block teaching or discussion about America's racist past and present, making a name for himself in a national Republican Party still defined by the legacy of Donald Trump, who famously mobilized white voters' racism and resentment of attempts to change the Nationals' racial hierarchy into winning, into a winning bid for the White House. I think it's time to reach out to some of my friends to have a civil um, discourse panel about some of these issues here. Because I know, I know somebody immediately that hates DeSantis. Okay, last year, DeSantis signed legislation dubbed the... Oh, I called it, didn't I? dubbed the Stop Woke Act, this is my guy, that restricts certain race-based conversations and analysis in schools and businesses. The law bars instruction that says members of one race are inherently racist or should feel guilt for past actions committed by others of the same race, among other things. So wait, 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 was he just trying to bar that the whole white guilt movement that I saw where um, you know, kids that were, I'm just going to speak in plain English, man. I'm not afraid of getting canceled here, where white young students were crawling on the floor and picking up the trash on their knees, and black students were taking the trash that they threw out. There's a video of this. Look it up. And throwing it back on the floor. All the while, the students are saying, I'm sorry. Is that the lessons that we're talking about? So, okay, let me uh, continue to dig here. And please remember, look, I do these live reacts because I want an honest, fresh opinion. I, I know responsibly I should do my homework. I leave that to you, the viewer. Okay, I'm not a pundit. I'm, I'm, I'm just a guy with the microphone trying to make sense of, of this country, of this life. All right, uh, so in his new effort to uh, restrict diversity efforts at public colleges, DeSantis... Pl DeSantis pledged at a news conference that critical race theory and diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion programs known as DEI would get no funding, and that will, and that will wither on the vine. Did you see? Did you listen to all the other places where all, that millions of dollars can go to the faculty, to the students, to scholarships, to teaching other things that can actually get people jobs? Seri okay, all right. You know that's just my spin. DeSantis is not alone. So far, at least 25 states have considered legislation not alone, huh? Well, or other steps to limit how race and racism can be taught. There's a whole conversation I have there. A according to an analysis from Education Week, eight states, all Republican-led, you got to add that, of course, uh, have banned or limited the teaching of critical race theory or similar concepts through laws or administrative actions. The bans largely address what can be taught inside the classroom. I have an idea. Why not save um, CRT 
uh, conversations, discourse, debate for after school, something, you know, like, uh, how about it not be weighed on the tax dollar? Our schools are in such a defunct position as it is. Uh, we need every penny to go to every asset and resource possible and, and not, uh, I stand by and it, <laughs> do you see the name that they're going to lead with here? Here you go. Trump. I said it. Trump who is also running for president again in 2024, unveiled his own education plan last week that promises to cut federal funding for any school or program that includes critical race theory, gender ideology, which was not a thing for a very long time, and I know my own stance is very controversial, but um, come on, I, uh, I can say things that will get me in trouble. I just, that whole gender ideology thing, man, There you can go... To special, <laughs> to a clinician, a doctor, a specialist. I don't know. Is the school necessarily where you have to go? To, okay. All right. All right. All right. The the debate can be had. Um, sorry, I, I gotta go back to where they say. Okay, Trump. For any school appropriate, right, critical or other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. Those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. You're making it something that it's not. You don't even know what you would. You didn't know what you were thinking before you put it on the sign because you let yourself get manipulated. Quote, our public schools have been taken over by the radical left maniacs. Ooh, that's from Trump. The only declared candidate in the race so far said in a video announcing the plan. He's not entirely off base here, okay? Just, I'm just, I'll, I'll, Throw your hate. I'm sure there'll be a little fallout. I he's I wasn't his number one fan, okay, but um, I also saw where he was doing what he said he was doing while the media said he wasn't, okay? It was a whole evolution. As Republican politicians use backlash against classroom uh, sh uh, curricula to win elections, the attacks are having ripple effects nationwide. In the wake of DeSantis blocking an advanced placement course on African American studies, the College Board, a national standards organization, released a final curriculum for the course with multiple changes that appeared designed to appease right wing politicians. The New York Times reported, What does it say? Does it not say all whites are racist because of uh, our history? Is that the appeasement? Um, okay, okay. The appeasement. All right, the College Board purged the names of many black writers. Okay, I don't see reason for that, but let's finish the sentence. And scholars associated, oh, <laughs> with critical race theory, the queer experience, and black feminism. The New York Times reported, contrasting the final curriculum with an earlier draft. It ushered out some politically fraught topic topics like Black Lives Matter. Shall we get started on the foundation of that? No, not here, not today. If you like keeping this channel for now. A college board spokesman denied to the New York Times that there had been any political influence on the curriculum and said that changes to the final course predated the right-wing backlash. DeSantis, who himself briefly taught history at a private high school, I didn't know that, in Georgia before attending law school, he's an educated man, was remembered by students there for his controversial views, uh-oh, on the Civil War. I'm nervous. The New York Times reported, which prompted a, a satirical, you know, satire video about him lecturing students. The Civil War was not about slavery. Satire. I, yep, going for the low blows in the name of comedy. Okay. Yep, manipulate the masses. Give it a look. Make it trendy. One of his former students said DeSantis was mean. He was mean to me and hostile toward me because I was black. The New York Times reported... Oh, goodness gracious. Damn, they're pulling out all the stops, dude. The Guardian has become no better than some uh, toxic YouTuber. Hey, hey, dude, let's go find this guy's, like, uh, let's go find this guy's ex or something. Let's let's go dig into this, that, or the other. I, I, okay. CRT is a way of thinking about America's history through the lens of racism. Because we don't know what that is. We need our schools to teach us about it. To make it even more present. Scholars developed it during the 1970s and 80s in response to what scholars viewed as a lack of racial progress following the civil rights legislation of the 1960s. It centers on the idea that racism is systemic. 
If it's systemic, how the hell do you treat it? This has been a, a popular question of mine. Um, in the nation's institutions, which function to maintain the dominance of white people in society. In a statement, the governor's office said that the pr proposal to block diversity and critical race theory programs... How oh, much more do we have? Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, let me... Let me uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know that... I don't want to bore you guys here. Prohibiting higher education institutions from using any funding, regardless of source, to support DEI, CRT, and other discriminatory initiatives. Basically, this is... Is it to, to teach division? Is it to insert uh, some a form of guilt uh i don't know i i am just a layman here i'm gonna skip this here also the debate okay at least they're going for a debate that's good the final word on diversity uh equ equity it should say equality okay and inclusion programs will come at another meeting before the meetings dozens of students held a rally outside to oppose major changes to the school and its mission which is known for its open approach to coursework without specific grades and being a safe place for many LGBTQ plus students who feel marginalized in other schools. It, it literally says K after the period. Do you see that? Wait, wait. So let me present it as I'm reading it. Okay, we'll just start here. And being a safe place for many LGBTQ plus students who feel marginalized in other schools. K? What the hell? Okay, come on, Guardian. Uh, that's what's at stake today. Okay. And what we're here to protect, the freedom to learn, the freedom, no, the freedom to freaking uh, manipulate and, and push a bias, I would say. There's a, there's a place, there, there's better funding or where the funding can go. The freedom to think and the freedom to be who we are, said fourth year student Madison Markham. Thank you, Madison Markham. Uh, okay, we're going to do the in closing here. I might speed run this one. I hope you appreciated this article. Before you move on, I was hoping you would wait. Okay, this is just to uh, get at the, um, to support Guardian's journalism. Let me see if there's anything fun. From Elon Musk to Rupert Murdoch, a small number of billionaire owners, they're taking the Bernie Sanders approach, have a powerful hold on so much of the information that reaches the public. How about your relationship with the NDAA bill and the legalization of propaganda? How about those hands in your pockets? Huh? How about that, Guardian? Because compared to all the positives that you didn't even give it a fair... You didn't, you didn't even put these in the article. You showed zero positive. You didn't show an even scale. You showed just a, a dilapidated, destroyed basement and said, this is what it is. There's 28 other states involved that are interested because everybody's seeing that the funding as it is could use a little reallocation and we're not certain that gender identity is the largest topic that America needs to be focusing on while we're getting our asses handed to us in the whole scoring of, of the hierarchy of intelligence in our country. Look, all I ask is for anybody and everybody to simply look into anything from the local level to, to higher. But you got to start from the bottom, work your way up. Or sometimes, in fact, it's in the reverse. I'm happy to announce, by the way, I, I won't drop the name, and I'm finding personally, this is me telling on myself, I don't know why I do this often, I'll often tell you guys a plan, and then the follow-through will either maybe happen or it won't, but this one, alright, I, I happen to know somebody who is an elected local official of in this state. I've known him for years, I knew him from an older job, and now I know him from my current job. And I asked him if he would be interested to come on and talk about what it's like from the inside and that it would take it easy. We would not go into the controversial areas. He sampled the show and he said he's interested. So kudos and fingers crossed to all that. I hope if anything that you take away from all this is some new information and that it's it's maybe inspired some some sentiment, some feelings. I do look forward to if you have any feedback, good or bad. In the comments, um, if you feel that um, dialing back on teaching these things is is worth the money that we're spending, which is, you know, I'm going to round it to about maybe over $300 million or so. That's, a, that's I'll say, less than an educated guess. Tell me you think that gender identity, CRT, 
and, and uh, you, you know, teaching teaching racism or about racism is is such a necessity. I mean, look at how we're suffering in the grand scheme of schools globally, internationally, not just from from the lens of being within our own borders. Don't get let's not get started on that either. So look, um, I hope that you have found this somewhat intriguing. Remember, let our dividers be an invitation to conversation, not confrontation. Only then can we ever hope to speak truth to power and fight these freaking bills and legislation that's getting written uh, by both parties behind closed doors. And, uh, and they just continue to laugh all the way to the bank while we are busy fighting one another, going for the jugular. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. I don't want to live in that world. I hope you don't either. Progressive Patriot signing off. Name change, name change coming soon. Much love, guys. Be good to one another.